then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine but with the precious
stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he soul felt its worth. The thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious 
This is my worship, this is my offering, in 
every moment I withhold nothing I'm learning to trust you even when I can't see it and even in suffering I have to believe it if you say it's wrong then I'll say no if you say release I'm letting go if you're in it with me I'll begin and when you say to jump I'm diving in if you say be still then I will wait if you say to trust I will obey I don't want to follow my own ways I'm done chasing feelings Spirit lead me oh. It felt like a burden The ones that could grab Took me further, further than I was asking, and simply to see you, it's worth it all. My life is an altar. Let your fire fall. If you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release. I'm letting go If you're in it with me I'll begin And when you say to jump I'm diving in If you say be still Then I will wait If you say to trust I will obey Teach me how to follow In your way I'm done chasing feelings Spirit
If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. And when you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. You're the only truth, the life, the way. I'm done chasing feelings, spirit. just filling this space with your presence. Thank you. We praise your name, Lord, and we just lift up this evening to you and this time and pastor and, and our brothers that are going to be speaking, Lord. Just fill them with your spirit and minister to them so they can bring your word to us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Tonight, we want to celebrate the moment when God did the unthinkable. When he did the unthinkable. When God took on flesh and came to this earth. It's mind-boggling to think that God would leave what he had in eternity and come here in the form of a man. See, we forget that Jesus is God and man. And so he came in the same way that any man would. He was born of a woman. But even that was a miracle. And we're going to touch on that tonight. Over the last month, we've been in a series called The Heart of Christmas. And we've been looking at what is the essence of Christmas? What did the birth of Christ, what does it mean? What can we draw from it? The first week we looked at hope. We saw that as, a, as human beings, and especially inside the church, we have our hope in our stuff and in our things. We love our things. We love our stuff. But our hope is really in Christ. The next week we looked at having peace. Everybody wants peace in their hearts. Everybody wants to have real peace, lasting peace. But we discovered that a lot of times we don't have peace because we don't know how to be obedient to what God tells us to do. And so because we're not obedient, we put ourselves in position where peace is not existent. Last week we looked at joy. Joy. We discovered that joy is not a feeling, but it's a knowledge. Happiness is a feeling. Joy is a knowledge. It's a knowledge of who God is and what he's doing in your life. And we discovered that a lot of times we don't have joy is because we have a root of bitterness that's in our heart that we have not been willing to release. And we went through the process of getting rid of that bitterness. Tonight, we're going to look at the birth of Christ and how these three things, hope, peace, and joy, are all a result of the birth of Jesus. Now, we all know the Christmas story. Right? We know about Mary and, and Joseph and the 100-mile ride they took to Bethlehem and the fact that Jesus was, 
was born in the way that he was born. But tonight I want to look at the man Joseph. And I, I want to look at some key things in Joseph's life that I believe us as Christ followers and believers, we need to grasp those things and we need to apply those things in our hearts. Because the bottom line is this, is that in order for us to have a relationship with God and walk with God the way he wants us to walk with him, we must have one key element in our lives, and that is called love. L-O-B-E, love. Because love is what, was what brought Jesus to this earth that starry night. And so tonight we look at the birth of Jesus, the circumstances that were going on around it, decisions that were being made, and how lives were being changed, and how human history was altered forever. The title of this message tonight is The, the Birth is in the Heart of Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you sent Jesus, man. Thank you, Jesus, that you willingly came to this earth and you did what nobody else could do, Lord. We're in awe of you. Tonight, as we take a few moments to look at that night, look at the decisions that were being made and the things that we need to grasp in those decisions, Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would lead us as we just sang. That we'd be open to the to the move of your spirit, to you speaking to our hearts. And that the only voices you hear are the voices that is the voice that comes from you tonight, God, the Holy Spirit to our lives. Bless our time together, Lord. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name. And all the church prayed. As I told you, we're going to kind of team teach. And so I'm going to have asked Rick and Chris, who are two of the elders in the church here, uh, to help teach this tonight. And so we're going to take three parts of the story and look at it. The first part of the story, we're going to look at the heart of integrity. The heart of integrity. Integrity, what does that entail and what does that look like? So Chris, if you want to dive up here, man, this is my water. Don't drink it, please. So <laughs> you, don't know what, you don't know what might happen. <laughs> joke like, hey, there we are. <laughs> I won't tell a joke like Pastor does. So. Yet he still leaves the water up here. Did you notice that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, the heart of integrity. Um, let's start off with this verse in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. It says this. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. So we're here to talk about the birth of, of the Messiah, right? This is something that was greatly anticipated for centuries. I mean, I don't think we really understand what, what this meant. Even from the creation story, they had been hoping and praying for the Messiah to come. They had been dreaming, hoping, praying, and telling their children about the time when Messiah would, was going to come and redeem them. This was what they were looking for. Could you just imagine how their conversations went? Maybe they, they imagined that the Messiah would look something like what we would think a superhero would look like. Messiah would pop out like Superman and save the day. He would save the nation and gather all the Israelites together and have a campfire and sing songs to God together. I guess that's my imagination. But if, if, if the Messiah is going to be anything that we hoped for, then what would Messiah's parents be like? What do you think? Why God chose Mary and Joseph is clear because they are in the, in the genealogy. But there are others that, they could have been, that, that could have been used. I mean, we really don't know why these two were chosen, but their faith and their actions were a good indication why. 
Luke tells us that when the angel Gabriel visited Mary, she responded in faith. In Luke chapter 1, verse 38, she says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. When God speaks, or his representative speaks to us, I, I pray that we would answer in kind, the same way. I'm the Lord's servant. What you said, please, let it, let it happen the way that you said it was. There's Mary, but now there's Joseph. Let's take a look at Joseph for a second. Matthew calls him a just man. What is a just man? You guys got any thoughts? A just man is one who does what is right in God's eyes. You see, Joseph and Mary were betrothed. It's a fancy old word for, for being engaged. And in the custom that they had, being engaged, being betrothed, was, was a legal binding agreement. They were married. They just didn't have all the marriage stuff. We'll leave it at that. See, it was, it was considered a marriage bond, and the only thing that could break that bond was infidelity, was, was the, the, uh, the cheating. And, and in Joseph's eyes, you know, here's Mary, she comes along and all of a sudden she's pregnant. Hi, I'm pregnant. Um, but nothing happened there. So in his mind, in his eyes, he's thinking, huh. you know, he, I'm, in a, I'm in a legal, I'm in a binding marriage right now. But Joseph really cares for Mary. He loves Mary. See, Joseph didn't have to divorce Mary. The law did not require it, but it was customary to divorce if there was infidelity or, or perceived infidelity. Joseph had, decided, had decided to divorce her quietly, to not make a public display. Normally, the woman was ridiculed. Um, do you remember the story of the woman who was caught in adultery? She was brought out in the middle of everybody and... and I mean, they made a show for Jesus, and they were going to ask him questions to try to trick him with it. But they were going to stone her, and not in a good way. But they were going to share, they, 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 they were wanting to make sure that Jesus was going to get tripped up in that situation. Okay? But... When the woman was caught in adultery, all of her business was put out for everyone to see. You know, the Pharisees did not care one bit about the well-being of this woman. They just wanted to trick Jesus, right? We covered that. That, you know, and prove that the law was right. But you see, Joseph did care about Mary. He loved her. And I imagine that he was caught between the customs of his day, which we've talked about. He was going to divorce her quietly, and how much he cared for Mary which is why he had decided to divorce her quietly. That is, until the Lord got his attention. It's easy for us to get caught up in what we think is right to do. Do you agree with that? In fact, it is very probable that to tear people down is easier than to build them up. In fact, with that statement, did anybody think of any any about being See, there's many times where, you know, there's, there's secrets that something that we, we choose to keep secret that, you know, instead, if we said it, it would hurt somebody. And um, in, in full honesty, when a pastor approached us and, and gave me this to uh, share, he wanted me to share a time when, when I could, uh, when, when I would have said, when I would, I'm sorry, if I would have kept something secret. Um, but I couldn't think of anything, <laughs> and I'm sure there is, and, and eventually the Lord will remind me, but if you're anything like me, there's plenty of times where the opposite is true, where, 
you know, you get put into a situation and instead of keeping your mouth closed, you open your mouth. And, and all sorts of fun things come out. <laughs> you know, instead of hurting people, I have a tendency more to hurt people. And there's a bitterness in my spirit about that. And I apologize for the things that I might say because, you know, sometimes we're just stupid. Amen? <laughs> you know, maybe it's just me. I'm stupid. But, yeah, that's called open mouth disease. You know, I like to, I like to think of it that way. So, See, as we grow in our walk with Jesus, we start to mature in our thinking. Well, hopefully, right? When we start caring for others, that the way that Jesus cares for us, then we start to understand what it means to love others. It's not easy to do the right thing, something for integrity. See, Joseph had it and cared more about Mary than his own reputation. And that's saying something. Because it wasn't just that period of time when Joseph and Mary were going to be dealing with, you know, people talking behind their backs. You know, they were, you know, they were betrothed, but Mary, he was, Mary was pregnant, you know. You know how people talk. But he cared more about his own reputation. Or no, I'm sorry. He cared more about Mary than his own reputation. A quote from Martin Luther King Jr. says this. It says, The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. See, that's integrity. Someone once said that, you know, who you are is not really who people think you are. You know, who you are is, is who you are behind closed doors when nobody's watching you. Where's your integrity then? If you got it, you got it. You know, but it's our, it's, our, it's our joy, it's our goal is to be able to treat everybody else with the same integrity. See, Jesus brings uh, that to us in his birth. When you have Jesus in your heart, it's easy to think of others more than yourself. Do nothing from selfish ambition, Philippians chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only on his own interests, but also to the interests of others. See, we're to be more like Joseph. Love our brothers and sisters more than ourselves. And that's our goal for this Christmas. Thank you. Is it, is it on? Death All right. Okay, now we're going to look at the second part. I'm going to read from Matthew 120 to 123. But he considered these things. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear and take Mary as your wife, for what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Verse 21. She will bear a son, and you shall call, call his name Jesus, for, his pe for he will save his people from their sins. Verse 22. All, we took, all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. Verse 23, Behold, the virgin shall continue, conceive, and bear a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel. And Emmanuel is God with us. And we look at um, Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive a son, and uh, will conceive and bear a son, and they you will call his name Emmanuel, God with us. And, you know, and Wow, that is amazing. Now there's a Greek, and he was pondering over and over in his mind, and there's a Greek word that I, I cannot even say. I, I, can you put, if you put it up there, it'd be great. Yeah, but you, you can see that. It's like he's milling things around over and over in his head, and I know we've all done that, you know, thinking just spinning like a, a, a slot machine, you know. And But like Chris was saying, Joseph thought more about Mary 
than his own reputation. I mean, Joseph was a stand-up guy. He's a guy you like to be your neighbor. Or, you know, he was just a, a great man, a great man. And, uh, and God knows when we're struggling with decisions. And it's not a newsflash when, when we're struggling. He knows everything. He knew we'd be in this room before the foundations of the earth. You know, it's, I, I, I don't know. It's beyond human comprehension. And God wants to help us with clarity. You know, God sent an angel to show Joseph what was happening in his will. You know, and, and that's what God does. You know, he, he, he helps us. God is, gives us direction. You know, I'd love, to say that, uh, I'd love to say that the angel said to Joseph's son, the angel reminded Joseph of his lineage. And we have the same lineage. We're children of God. And we forget that. I forget it all the time. Because this world is going so fast right now. It's spinning. It just, it's, 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 you know, I'm an old school, and this is, this is, it's, it's, God's putting the pieces back together, but it looks like it's coming apart. But God's in control. And, you know, after reminding Joseph of his identity, you know, do not fear. And that's, we got the same God. We serve the same God. He was the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's not going to change, you know. And I'm sure what Joseph was afraid what was happening, is, you know, and, and on top of that, when you see an angel, you know, a lot of people that see angels, that they fall down like they're dead, but they're not, you know, it's just something we can't, it's supernatural, something we can't even comprehend, you know. And the baby in her womb was a supernatural event, supernatural, man. Mary was a chosen vessel. We don't worship Mary, but we know she was a chosen vessel, you know. And, you know, it says, uh, share a story when God helped show your, his will. You know, in April 1987, God took me to the woodshed. You know, I had been partying for 30 years. And he just showed me that night. I can't explain what happened. When you're, when you're in something, it's just, it changed the course of my life. It changed the course of my life, you know. And there's a quote from a... Uh, the love of Christ is always there and unchanging, no matter what we do. But when we are obedient, we actually begin to feel it. And that's by a, a Christian poet, Chris uh, Yami, and I, I don't know who that is, but I know there's a great country uh, philosopher that said he looked all over hell for heaven and couldn't find it. And we had another rock and, we had another rock and roll star that said he, he couldn't get no satisfaction. <laughs> and he tried everything. But Jesus, if we don't have Jesus, the world, the world is empty. This world is fleeting. You know, the Apostle Paul said this life is like a mist, you know. Me and my wife have been married uh, 34 years coming up, and it doesn't seem like it. You know, it's, it's crazy. Time, time is just, it goes quick. That, and that's, that's what I got to say. And thank you. So integrity and consideration, those should be foundational pieces in our lives, church. We should have integrity, and we should consider others above ourselves. And it's so easy in this time of year to get selfish about things and to lose sight of the fact that you're just as valuable to God as me or anybody else. And we should value each other in that way. And so Joseph had a heart of integrity. He had a heart of consideration. But he also had the heart of God. I believe the reason that Mary and Joseph were chosen is because they had a heart that was chasing after God. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 tells us this. It says, She will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. It's so easy at this time, as we think about the birth of Christ, that we 
lose sight of the fact that Jesus came for one reason. He came to save his people from their sins. Now, this is specifically speaking of the Jewish people at this time, but we know that at Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, that this became a universal thing. It became, every, it became something for all of mankind. And so this prophecy, this, this word that's being spoken here, it reminds us of God's love. It reminds us of his, of his unwavering love for us. God never quits on his church. We quit on ourselves, but God never did. When Adam and Eve fell in the garden, God didn't say, well, psh, I'm going to wipe these people out. I'm going to tear the earth apart, and I'm going I'm to start over new. He said, nope, okay, here's what's going to happen. There's penalties for what you've done. There's consequences. Church, one of the things we've got to learn is that when we make bad decisions, there's going to be consequences. That does not mean that God still doesn't love us. Just means that the natural course of things, there's going to be consequences for what we do. But God put a plan in motion for humanity the minute that things fell apart. He put a plan together to redeem mankind. How deep the love of God is to send his son to what would be the most horrible death, man. If you've never studied what crucifixion is it, is, it was made to do one thing, inflict the most pain possible and sustain you for a few days of life. It was cruel. It was horrible. I mean, I, I can't even imagine going through that, but Jesus did. And Jesus had each and every one of us on his mind when he was on that cross. And I always say this when we do communion. One drop of blood that fell off of Jesus had one of your names on it. See, the depth of God's love is so deep and so wide that he sent his son. That he sent his son to redeem us, to bring us back to him. Could you or I do the same? I could not imagine sending one of my sons, I got four of them, I could not imagine sending one of them to do this, but God did. God did. God was motivated by love, church, and we need to be motivated by love also. When we give gifts, why do we give gifts? Do we give gifts so we get the, the praise of, oh, that was a dope gift, man. Thank you for that gift. Or do we give a gift because we genuinely love and care for the person that we're giving a gift to? See, that's the key. Because gift giving should be a reflection of God in our lives, man. It's not about how much you spend. It's never about that. But it turns into that. It turns into this competition on who can spend more money. No, when you give a gift genuinely from your heart, I can tell when somebody genuinely gives me a gift. I see it in their eyes. I hear it in their voice. I've been given the simplest things that I still have because I knew that that person gave it to me out of a genuine love for me. And I'm not an easy person to love. So, you know, you, when, you, when you flip me a gift like that, man, you're, you're really stepping out, right? <laughs> church. My prayer is tonight, first and foremost, that you understand how much God loves you. I was sharing with a brother this week that, that I struggle with that. As your pastor, I mean, I'm a transparent guy. I struggle with God's love for me because I think uh, God, God loves you guys, but he don't really love me. I know me. I know who I was, and I know who I am now. I know what I can be. And so I struggle with realizing that God loves me. And so when I sit up here and tell you that God loves you, I really believe that for you. I struggle with it for me. But here's the key, is that I'm not the only one that struggles that way. Some of you do too. You need to understand God loves you. 
Secondly, God wants to have a relationship with you, a real and relevant relationship, not some cheesy relationship, not some relationship built on going into a building once a week and doing your duty for an hour and then leaving and living for the world the rest of the week. No, he wants a real and relevant relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you to where you get to know his voice, to where you have these intimate moments with him. To where you know that God is God in your life and God will never let you down. He'll never let you go. He will continue to sustain you no matter what you're going through. Church, I can only come through one person and I can only come through Jesus. Listen, I grew up in a church that was full of liturgy. And if I do these things and if I'm baptized in an infant and all this other kind of stuff, I'm going to heaven. That's a lie from the pit of hell. There's nowhere does it say that in the Bible. Nowhere does it say that. What it says is that you need to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and you shall be saved. You shall be saved. We sang the song. At the end of the song, it said, you are the truth, the life, and the way. Right? Jesus is. Jesus is the only way. If you have never, ever, ever encountered Christ, tonight is a night to do that. Tonight's a night to stop playing religious games and, and all these things, man. I, tell, I told you earlier that we have this moment. We could go out the door tonight, drive down the road and get T-boned by a semi-truck and be gone. We don't don't have tomorrow yet. But God is saying, I want to bring you into eternity with me now. See, eternity starts now. That's when it starts. I want to encourage you tonight as I close. If you you don't have a relationship with God, get it before you leave. It's real simple. It's just real simple, man. Get with God and just tell God, Man, I've tried to live my life on my own, and it's been a mess, and I need a change, and I need you. That's all you need to do, man. There's no magic formula. There's no magic prayer, right? I don't lead people in the sinner's prayer. Why? Because, man, I've led tons of people in a sinner's prayer that it wasn't even real. Next day, it was like, you know, didn't even know who that was. It starts here, church. It starts in your heart. We celebrate the birth of Jesus because he can set us free. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you for this night. Lord, thank you, Father, that you love us the way you do. And thank you, God, that we can be free. Man, oh, man. We don't need to be bound up by things, Lord. We've got you. And we know, God, that you are a God that seeks to give us freedom. Freedom from sin. Freedom from our stuff. A God that wants to bring peace and joy and hope into our lives. Integrity. Consideration for others. A God that wants to put his heart in us. We thank you for that. Lord, we love you. We celebrate you, and we thank you in Jesus' name.
Just sit in that moment, church. Just sit in that moment right now. And just reflect back. Reflect back on that night. And just think of the, the fear and the faith that Mary and Joseph needed to do what they did. Think about the baby, the birth of Jesus, the Christ child, the Messiah. wrapped in swaddling clothes to begin his journey that would ultimately end with not just his death, but his resurrection. Thank you, Lord, for what you do.